Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of How We Do Stuff. Um, I'm Michael Bunker. About a year ago, uh, maybe nine months ago, uh, I started a video on uh, how we make our off-grid sauerkraut. And I showed it to some of you, but I never did finish it. So in this episode, what we're going to do is make uh, off-grid sauerkraut. And I'm going to show it all the way through to the end. And I hope you guys enjoy it. Hey everybody, this is Michael Bunker, the reasonable man, your plain and frugal guy. Uh, today we're making a uh, batch of sauerkraut. And um, before I get into that, I wanted to just share the basic philosophy of it with you because if you've watched me long enough, you know that I'm all about the, the philosophy of it and not so much the recipes. If you understand the philosophy of why something works, then you can adapt it and you can do it your own way. You don't have to have recipes. And so recipes uh, actually uh, evolved uh, because uh, people wanted to replicate some particular taste that ended up, uh, they ended up liking. But they learned, people learned philosophies first. So they learned why fermentation worked. And so going back 100 years, going back to the 1920s, all the way back to several hundred years before that, uh, sauerkraut was um, basically the crop was taken and the entire crop would have been cut up or or uh, put in crocks or containers in the ground uh, covered uh, salt would be added and co covered up and then um, after several weeks and throughout the winter the family would go and uncover it and 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 pull out their kraut and so this was long before canning had ever been invented they figured out that the philosophy was is if, if you had to write salt content that the good bacteria made a tasty product and the bad bacteria didn't make it spoil. So that's really the whole philosophy of sauerkraut or any type of food fermentation is that you're just getting rid of the bad bacteria or keeping it from multiplying and you're creating an environment for the good bacteria, the lactobacilli, to do its job. So if you come up with an idea of what makes a good brine uh, and uh, you know that's anywhere from one to three tablespoons of salt per quart or 8 to 12, 8 to 10 or 12 per uh, gallon, you can ferment anything uh, and uh, you can take fresh vegetables, you can put them in a container, you want to create an anaerobic environment so that air is not getting uh, to it. If the material stays below the level of the brine, it's going to ferment and you're going to end up with something that's pickled. That's, that's really the whole philosophy of it. So what happens is if you're watching YouTube or if you're, or if you're reading a book and you see a recipe and you don't know the philosophy you think that there's some magic alchemy in that recipe that that's making it work and it's not it's just uh, nature doing its thing and so uh, that's why I don't get too much into recipes the basic principle is that if you take cabbage and you keep it submerged in a brine uh, for enough time it's going to ferment and it's going to cre create sauerkraut and this used to be done, like I said, in the ground. They would take crocs and put them in the ground. They would put them in the root cellar. You could do it now with canning, uh, where you put them into a, a ball or a mason jars. Uh, you can put airlocks. It can get very, very expensive, and it can get very involved. And there's a lot of websites and foodie blogs that get into food fermentation, and those things are great. I love to read the books and read the recipes, but uh, that's not really what I'm all about. Now, normally we would grow our own. Uh, cabbage and this would all be made right here on the farm which is the most frugal way to do it if you will get your supplies uh, uh, crocs or jars or containers non-metal containers uh, have a supply of canning salt or sea salt and um, uh, the other things that you'll see cutting board and knife uh, shredder whatever it is that you think you need um, then what you can do is you can wait for sales and what we did is I was at the store the other day and I got cabbages. You can get cabbages on sale for 29 or 39 cents a pound. And I think we uh, probably used uh, in, in this uh, uh, six or seven cabbages. 
uh, you, you will generally end up with, and this is a very general number, you'll end up with about a quart of sauerkraut per cabbage. That's just a real round number. And so, uh, and what a lot of people would do is they would bake their sauerkraut in their, in their crock, and then they would just come and, and scoop it out as they needed it. And so for a meal or uh, to put some in a container, uh, since we don't have refrigeration and we don't um, uh, have a lot of the on-grid stuff, uh, what we do is after a while, after this good, we taste it and we know it's good, we'll probably put it in jars, uh, uh, attach the lids somewhat loosely, and keep them in the root cellar, and it'll be good for uh, a good long time. And uh, it doesn't stick around long because we really, really enjoy it. Anyways, we're going to make kraut, and we're uh, going to try to do it as cheaply and as uh, easily as possible. So um, most of the time you'll be able to hopefully grow your own cabbage and vegetables but sometimes you'll find them on sale and um, so we bought a bunch of cabbages and we're going to make a big crock full of uh, sauerkraut. So first thing you want to do is you want to peel off the yucky outer skins of the cabbage that have already kind of you know started to turn a little bit. We'll get rid of those then we're going to take off another layer and we're going to set those aside of good leaves and we're going to set those aside because later on when we get them in the crock, we'll use the good leaves on the top to keep everything pressed down. So we've gathered up our other things we're going to put in here. And you can add pretty much anything like uh, apples and we've got some shredded carrots, some garlic from our garlic crop this year. The basic uh, principle of fermentation is just that you want to... Uh, Make sure that you create an environment that's uh, good for lactobacilli, which is just a salty brine uh, over a, uh, several weeks, and you'll create a good fermented product no matter what it is. All right, so we're just, uh, I mean, you can use a shredder if you've got a nice cabbage shredder. Uh, this is another way to do it, is just to... Uh, Slice it really, really thin since it's in layers. That pretty much does the same job as shredding it. And um, as you start to build some up, stop for a second. You pull it off, and you can just drop this in here. Now, normally, if this was uh, homegrown cabbage, we would pound this. We'd get about an inch. We'd get about an inch in here. And then we would uh, pound this, so which would get started uh, get it, getting it to release its water. And you use the water from the actual cabbage uh, for your brine. Then you just sprinkle salt over it. We're not going to do that because this is store-bought cabbage, and there's not a whole lot of water in it. So we're already making, we've got two gallons of brine right here, which is um, a normal fermentation brine is anywhere from 8 to 12 tablespoons of canning salt or sea salt to um, per gallon so we've got two gallons uh, here and so that we I think we use what 20 yeah 20 uh, tablespoons of sea salt and then uh, so you'll, you'll layer this as you go in here as you go into the uh, fermenter and uh, once you get about an inch in there you want to pack it in real good uh, we will pound it down a little bit, even with just my fist, and uh, so we can get more in there. And she'll keep cutting, and what I'll do is start adding some of the other ingredients so they're equally mixed throughout the, the kraut. Got some of the garlic here. So once you get a little bit in there, you can use a, we usually use a wood mallet, or you can use your fist, or you can use your hands, and you just start pressing it down and uh, compacting it. You want it really pretty tight. And what this will normally do with good fresh cabbage is it'll be full of water and it'll start leaching that water out. And you're, you're sprinkling salt in here usually as you do it. And so that, uh, that causes it to, uh, the osmotic effect starts growing out the water. Okay, so we're about halfway up the crock right now, and uh, I'm kind of pounding this with a potato masher, 
as we go and adding ingredients. And then uh, when we get this, when it starts to really fill up, I'll probably really get something and pound it down real good so we can get more in there. And I'm continuing to add, adding a little bit of the ingredients. You can ha have apples, you can add uh, red pepper flakes or red peppers, onions. That's right. As you go, I'm also sprinkling a little bit of sea salt as we go. Uh, just to help as I'm pounding it, it'll help draw some of the water out, help me compact it a little bit more. Uh, you can do this with fresh cabbage completely without adding any water, but uh, with this stuff, it's, it's just, we're going to have to add the brine. So, Okay, we've kind of, here, look down in here, we've kind of got the cabbage all the way up to the top. And uh, I kind of ran out of, out of carrots on the way up, I didn't space them out good, but that's fine, it'll all work out alright. So I've been kind of pressing this down, and like I said earlier, if you're doing this with uh, fresh cabbage, the water will start rising, and eventually the water from the cabbage will rise higher than the level of the cabbage, and that's really your, and you would have been adding salt all along. We knew that wasn't going to happen with uh, store-bought cabbage, so we've pre uh, uh, created a brine here, and this is uh, 8 to 10 tablespoons per gallon of water, and this is the uh, cabbage that we let, pulled off early. That we're going to use to help keep the sauerkraut from floating on the brine. Actually, let's put the brine in here first. We're going to pour the brine in here. Put those and then the rocks and then pour the brine over. I'm going to pour it up to there, then I'll put it up to, and then I'll do that on the top at the end. Just make sure we get brine all the way down to the bottom. We didn't know, you never know when you're doing this on the fly how much cabbage you're going to have and how much uh, you're going to need for the crock. Um, so that's why we're doing it with the brine, just to make sure. The basic principle is, is that the salt in the brine is going to keep the bad bacteria from multiplying. Okay, we're about to the point where it's almost floating. So now we're going to put these... Uh, pieces of, uh, of cabbage that we kept and we're going to make a, if you look down in here, we're going to make a little roof uh, keep all that from floating. Alright, we've got these weights, these have been sanitized, these came with the crock, but you can use a plate or you can use a bag of brine in a Ziploc bag and uh, these fit down in there you can see, if I press down on here, you can see the water coming up. And what we're going to do is add some more brine to cover that. And as long as you check this every couple of days and make sure that that cabbage is staying below the level of the brine, then you should be alright. Now this is an airlock. Um, check it. Hope not. This is an airlock uh, crock, so we're going to take some of the brine and pour it into this channel. And keep it below the level of this, this lip. And what will happen is as this releases CO2, it will bubble out through, the, through here and it will keep air from going in there. Alright, so this will take anywhere from three to four weeks up to two months depending on the temperature we're expecting some hundreds this week we're in um, early September so I'm gonna get this down the root cellar and we'll check on it every couple of days okay everybody well it's been about nine or ten months probably nine months since that last part uh, was filmed that you just watched and here we are in uh, June starting to be late June of 2018 and this is the last jar of the batch you watch us make. And so Danielle and I have had this with not every meal, but uh, a lot of meals, um, kind of as a uh, as a condiment and as a health health boost. So I've got here a, a lunch of some sausage, some mustard, some fermented green beans, and I'm going to have some kraut with it from our last bit of kraut. We need to make some more. 
The video you watched was recorded in September of 2017 and this went into the root cellar in October of 2017. No added canning, no pressure canning and uh, it's delicious. Full of probiotics and um, healthy gut flora. So excellent and I hope you try it out. Okay, everybody, thanks for watching. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, that's the way we uh, make sauerkraut without refrigeration, without canning, or any type of even heat preservation. Uh, I really need y'all's help. And uh, I'm always telling you to subscribe because I need to get up to 1,000 subscribers. But uh, what I really need you to do is send in your questions, comments, suggestions. Do it in the comment section because I'm trying to do a Thursday Q&A. And if people don't ask questions, then I don't know what you guys want to see. And so if you would, go into the comment section. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for further videos, drop them in there. Please do subscribe. Thank you for stopping by and seeing how we do stuff. And we'll see you on the next episode.